Welcome to the Femininja Project. I am your host, Cheryl I Love, middle aged ninja hiding in plain sight, dedicated to restoring human dignity one person at a time and helping you unleash your personal power. Discover that it's possible to look like a woman, act like a lady, move like a ninja, and think like a warrior. And remember, men are always welcome on the Femininja Project. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Femininja Project. And one of the things I love to do is to highlight powerful women, strong women, men too, but the focus is on some of the most magnificent women that I have met. And one of those is here with me today as my guest. Her name is Barbara Horde. She is a powerful, vulnerable, authentic, and passionate woman who is the host of a podcast called I Am This Woman. She has an amazing story. She's got a lot to say. So Barbara, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Cheryl, for having me on the show. I, I love coming on and sharing, and especially with someone who's come onto my show, which you did, and I loved your topic. Uh, so this is exciting to be here on the other side. Well, I have been looking forward to this ever since I was on your show, so I'm so glad we made it happen. And what I really want you to focus on is I would love for you to share your story about the podcast, the I Am This Woman podcast, what drove you to start the podcast, the message, and anything else that you can share with us. Yeah, of course. So it's really interesting because you I, I love it when you say podcast because that's my next step in the future because right now we do it on Facebook Live, right? And how it all started out was I went to my coach at the time and I'm like, I think I'm going to do a show called I Am This Woman. And she's like, and what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to interview amazing women. And she's like, do you think you can do that? And I'm like, I really think I can. And it all started two steps back was because I was interviewing a woman for a book I'm working on. And when she was done, she says, you remind me of Oprah and you get so deep into the conversation and you allow me to just open up. And when I heard that, I said, most likely you wouldn't be interviewed by Oprah. You wouldn't talk to even maybe her guests, but if I can create something where I can honor these amazing, incredible women, and that means honoring you because You've gotten a black belt or honoring you because for 30 days you made your bed. And that's what it's about. And we've had over 50 shows. We started in January. So our one year anniversary is coming up. And it is just a really beautiful thing where we do mostly women and we have a few men and we talk about like saying, who are you? How are you showing up as this woman? Mm -hmm. So you do interview a variety of different people, uh, mm -hmm. different backgrounds. How do you choose your guests? I think one of the things that I want to do is I want to understand your story because a lot of people say, well, I'm a coach or I'm, I'm a coach and I, I help you to figure this out. I want to know what you've done to help yourself figure out. How do you come forth and say, I am this woman, I am showing up this way. And so the reason why I want a variety is because your topic might really speak to someone where someone else's topic speaks to that person. So by doing it that way, there are so many incredible, incredible people on this planet. And so if I'm able to create a space where you can come and share your story and someone hears it and it empowers and impacts them, then I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And what you're doing is not only honoring women and the amazing women that you're interviewing, but you're also giving a platform to men for where they can share their voice. And that's, I think what you said is your way of honoring the men who are honoring these amazing women. Yes, for sure. Because I think the thing about it is, is that when you're doing something with women's empowerment, you think that you're mostly focused on this whole thing of women, 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 but there are incredible men who are always supporting women. One of the things I do at the end of every show is I always say, if you could say your name and say, I am this woman. One of my favorite ones, a favorite guest is Jerry Seidel. And he was a former, I worked for him. And when he came on at the end, I said, if you could say your name and say, I am this woman. And he's like, I'm Jerry Seidel. And I am this woman for all the women that have come before me. Aww. And that's what it's about is that sometimes, you know what, when I think about like when I voted yesterday for, you know, think about this a hundred years ago, we weren't allowed to do that, 
right before that. And so when, when a man says, I am this woman for all the women who've come before me, it, it's he's laying that groundwork. And so for me, if I can have these amazing men on there, then maybe more of them will also be encouraged to lay the groundwork for women. I call it the many magnificent men in my life. When I start yes. talking, because of course I never would have gotten to the level of black belt without number one, my husband's support who didn't mind me going off to the dojo three to five times a week with all these strange men, but all of the guys that supported me in my journey and really respected me, they taught me, they, you know, teased me, made fun of me. I mean, it was just the whole thing, that type of relationship that I wouldn't have been able to achieve or accomplish what I did without them and their help. And I think that there is way too much man bashing out there. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, uh, sure. Because I think what happens is it's, it's like, well, women's power, women power does not mean we take away from men, because if that's the case, all we've done is flip the script. Mm -hmm. What women's power means is that we're standing, but what it says is that when we're standing, maybe we're holding a hand of a woman on this side, but maybe we're holding a hand of a man on this side. And so if we give them the opportunity, like we need to show up as who we are, both men and women. And then if we place that opportunity there, you never know that your greatest gift or the person who supports you the most could be that man who's been in your life and you just never have given them the opportunity to even do that. Mm -hmm. It's about having really good, strong relationships. It, it comes down to that. Everything that we do is about the relationship, mm -hmm. everything that we do. And I think that that's what's so important is because first of all, it's the relationship we have with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then when we allow that person, like when I allow my real self to show up, my authentic, crazy, wild self to show <laughs> up, right? Then yeah. you see it, right? And then when you see it, it opens up that space for us to have that conversation. So once I connect with me, then I can at least, I can see the greatness in you. And so that's why when I say I am this woman is that I know I can say for you, how are you this woman? And then how in turn do you support me and being who I am as this woman? So the other thing I wanted to talk about is the, the empowerment, the women's empowerment. And I think a lot of times that gets to be misconstrued of being either really tough or trying to be masculine or having this, this shell around us. And in my humble opinion, women's empowerment is really about embracing our femininity and understanding that there is this incredible amount of strength, power, and resilience in each and every one of us. And that is, to me, what empowerment and women's empowerment is all about, and confidence. So we have the confidence to be able to go out in the world and share our gifts with other people. Right. And I love how you said the resilience. I was just talking about that this morning, is that no matter what is going on with in the world, with the elections, whatever, we have a resilience. You know, um, I believe that even within our resilience, it comes from our families. It comes from the people who are around us. We have a resilience to stand strong, to learn, to grow. So women's empowerment for me is you know, who are you and what are the gifts within you? And I call it your essence, mm. you know? And sometimes our essence gets buried by someone telling you you're not good enough or someone telling you you should be thinner or you're someone telling you something else. Well, honey, I look at it this way. I am all fabulous, right? And so when I embrace all of this fabulousness and I share it and, and I'm resilient, so when I fall, let me fall because then I can be the example of someone who's fallen and gotten back up. So I love the fact that you said that. So that's what my goal is, is asking women questions to make them think, but also just really to make them see who they are. If they can ask themselves that same question and then they can stand and really embrace their essence and their truest essence of who they are. Okay, so I'm loving all of your fabulousness and I know that. <laughs> I can see it, but there's also a word that I would use for you uh, that you haven't mentioned yet. So I want you to mull this around a little bit is your brilliance. You have such an am amazing amount of brilliance. I mean, you could just see it, not only intellectual brilliance, but, you know, your whole, shall I say, essence, you know, your whole being is just very, it's, it's so bright and brilliant and infectious, infectious, positive energy. I love that you said brilliance because 
years ago, like I never finished school, right? And so I was always doubting myself. And then the word, if, if you're going to say, name that B word, so my name is Barbara, right? Name the B word that, that really represents you. Brilliance is my word. So when you say that, I love it on all ends. I love it on the brilliance that I ensued. I love it on the brilliance where I think, what I read, what I, you know, I don't just think I'm only this or I'm only that. What, what I do is I really try to grow within myself so that I can be more. So this whole thing of this infectiousness, this way to do is because I wanna say that if I smile at you or like this morning, um, I was talking to a nurse and she's like, oh my gosh, your energy is so great. So if I do that, and who knows what she might be going through at home or personally. So if I can let my brilliance shine on all levels, mentally, physically, like just spiritually, whatever it is, then I can maybe help help somebody say, you know what? I, I do deserve to be here on this earth. I do see that. And and sometimes I think that's all it takes is that we're we're quick to bash someone down. And so mm. I want my brilliance to shine. So I want to say, guess what? Let my light shine so that you can see the greatness in you. And that to me kind of ties back into the resilience because if you have your brilliance and you're sharing it with somebody, that gives them that extra little boost of confidence, that recognition, that maybe respect from another person that can build up their resilience and make them a stronger person rather than keeping, you know, knocking people down. I just don't understand that. I just, right. it makes me a little bit crazy. And I think there's a little bit too much of that as well. But when you have that kind of resilience, like you said, you can fall and, you know, let, let yourself fall because right. you know now how to get back up. Yeah. And also, here's the great part. We are so busy trying to stand tall. Sometimes mm -hmm. we don't realize in the falling, when we drop, we'll see something and we'll go, wait a minute. I didn't, I wouldn't have seen that if I didn't fall. I wouldn't have seen that if I didn't lose the job. I wouldn't have seen that if the person didn't break up with me. I wouldn't have seen that if I had to start over, you know? And that's the thing about it. Be, be brilliant. Be outrageous in who you are as a person and then have the resilience to keep going when you feel like giving up it's like no i'm not going to give up no matter who's elected in office no matter what is happening with my job no matter what is going on i have something within me that right there that essence that that it's it's almost a juiciness it's like oh my goodness mm -hmm. so yeah i am i'm grateful you know and um I lost my sister, you know, basically a month ago, a little over a month ago to COVID. And it was, I had people who say, I'm so sorry for your loss. I'm so sorry. But the one thing it taught me, first of all, is to honor her life by living mine. Mm -hmm. But it also taught me that the world keeps going. So sometimes, and even within that, I found the resilience to keep going. And, and so to me, I am, I'm just grateful for every moment that I get to wake up in the morning and I get to try this again. Mm -hmm. I think that's also another way that you're honoring her. I mean, and I, we did talk about this even before the show. You had uh, a lovely celebration of life and I saw some of the, the pictures on Facebook and it was so beautiful. But because she would not have wanted you to curl up in a ball and just not go on. Yeah, for sure. And I think what happens is, is that when someone goes, you, you know, we don't want anyone. Look, the one thing we all have in common, take the race aside, take all that stuff, right? Even take humanity aside, we're all going to die. It, it's going to happen. But we focus on like, I want that person. I need that person. And my favorite line is, how am I going to go on? So then I go and I, I touch their pulse and I'm like, let me check. And I'm like, oh my gosh, guess what? You have a pulse. You are going on. So I think the thing about it is, is that honor their life that they were in your life. Honor their life by saying, what was great about them? What did you learn from them? How did you grow with them, right? And so what did they give you where you're able to go ahead and move on and not forgetting them? But when you take that walk, you're walking for them. When mm. you make that speech, you're speaking for them. When you go out and help someone, you're helping for them. My sister was such a giver. And that's the one thing, if I can be even half of that person and give back into being service like that, then I'm honoring her life and I'm honoring the gift that she gave me. Oh, wow. That's just amazing. 
I, I just want to bottle up all of this energy. I want to take some of this juiciness and, you know, see if we can somehow just sell it. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Yeah, I think that's the thing. And it's, it's taken me a long time to get to the point of being really like honoring this who I am. And, and that is the thing that I think is the most for me um, is that I'm so proud of myself for doing that, for going through everything and now getting to this point. And one of the big things I say is like, I have this table that I invite people into, but before, I think I must have had so many chairs at that table. Now I've removed them. I have a certain amount. And the people who are there, like, it's an honor to be in my space. And not saying this with any attitude, but because humbly, like, coming before people to say, like, I want to share who I am with you, you know? And I think that's the greatest gift. Take all the other stuff aside. Take the politics. Take the race. Take, take what you think. And just share who you are with someone else. Mm -hmm and see if you can find that common ground to stand on together. So I wanted to ask you a little bit more about your journey of getting to this point, because when you said those words, I am so proud of myself, it was almost like I heard angels singing because mm -hmm. well, that's one thing we never say to ourselves. Yeah. It's always, you know, oh my God, I am no good. I haven't done this. You know, why can't I lose weight, make more money, you know, right. write a best-selling novel. And it's like, there's, we all have these amazing gifts. We all have these amazing stories that got us to this point. And the fact that you could just burst out like that, I am so proud of myself. And I think that that's a really good life's lesson. I think we all need to do that. Yeah, it, it was, it's, it's been the work of doing a transformational training. It's been the work mm -hmm. of books. It's been the work of going to see a therapist. It's all of those things of being able to say, this is the stuff like right now I started to see a therapist just because of some of my mother issues. It's being honest with yourself that guess what? I can't solve all of this. So seeing that therapist taking out some of these things and also you know, when you take out something that you think is buried beneath your essence, you take it out and look at it. Sometimes you find out you think it's something as hurting you. And then you look at it, you're like, oh, you mean I can look at this differently? So, so I think the thing about it is, is that it took me, I'm 53. It took me all this time to be a voice for me. And I think that's what the reason why I do I Am This Woman, honestly, is because all the women that I meet, if, if, if you are making a little puzzle, all of these are little puzzle pieces. And it's something that's really inspiring me. So that's the thing. I do all of this work is because I want to be this woman for someone else. But I had to do the work. Don't be embarrassed to do the work. Don't be ashamed of doing the work. Get out there and do the work so that you can uncover the diamond that you are. It's just sometimes under a pile of mess, that's all. And if you have to get dirty, honey, get a little dirty. It's okay. Well, that's kind of how a diamond is made, isn't it? It really is. And it's, it's down like, deep, it's deep in the dirt. Deep in the dirt, you got to kind of chisel it out. I mean, think about Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. I remember seeing the Seven Dwarfs and they're like, you know, chip, chip, chip. and then all of a sudden they get in, they look and like, uh. and so some people won't see the greatness in the diamond, this is what I tell you. Look in the mirror, honey. All you have to do is see your own greatness. When someone doesn't see you, well, then they might need a pair of glasses or something because you are the one that shines. If you see your shine, the rest of them, because somebody, I promise you, someone will see your shine, mm -hmm. you know, but when you see it first, then all of a sudden your brilliance is so big that people can't help but see it. That's why you say, oh, Barb, brilliance. You're absolutely right. And on all levels, I'm brilliant. <laughs> I just love you. So <laughs> I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the book because I didn't realize that you are writing a book. So, ooh. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I, you know how I, writers don't really write until they just start to write, right? Mm -hmm. And so the book is, it's all these different women's stories of resilience and joy and pain. Um, and I've started and stopped and started and stopped. And um, so it's there, but it's right now it's on the back burner of stopping. I'm really honest about that. 
it's something that I will do. And some of the stories are probably some of the most incredible, vulnerable, authentic, passionate stories you could ever read. And now it's just a matter of, is this something worth it for me to do? So right now it's a kind of on the back burner book kind of thing. Well, I think that's pretty typical as, as you're writing a book. I mean, you know, I, I have published one and that was about four years ago was when it came out. And I've got two on my computer right now that are works in progress. And there was times when I, you know, can sit down and for months I'm like on fire. And then all of a sudden it's like I hit the wall and it's not even writer's block. It's just like, it's not what I need to do right now. I need to get this out. I will get it out, but right now my attention has to go someplace else. And it's that awareness of what do I need for myself right now? Where are my creative juices or my creative flow going to be the most effective and how to recognize that? You know, people who are either really creative or just have very busy minds like I do and I think you do, you know, yes. we got a lot going on. For sure. My, my, my best friend says this person, she's like, you're such a visionary that you'll hear something. You're like, Ooh. And so my mind, so sometimes I literally have to be pulled within and kind of say, okay, slow down. But I think the one thing about it is building. I am this woman. I'm so passionate about it, but I've had some bumps in the road or maybe like really mountains in the road. Mm -hmm. And so it has had me go like take six steps back and take five steps back. It's like playing a board game that never ends. Mm -hmm. And so right now I'm at the point of, I've been 25 steps back and now I'm moving forward. So uh -huh. right now you're right, as far as creatively, it's not that place, but I have other things within I Am This Woman that I'm really focusing on. And now I'm feeling confident enough to say, okay, this is something because it's really gonna make a difference in another woman's life. Um, and that's why I'm moving forward. And that's why I don't give up. Here I am. I'm, I'm obsessing a little bit about the book. So I'm going to go back to the book again. I love it though. Good. Maybe you encourage me to do it. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's going to be wonderful. I know it is. And there is nothing like publishing a book when you see it. I mean, it's, it's one heck of a journey. I will tell you that. But to hold that book in your hands for the first time and realize, oh my gosh, I did this. I created it. I mean, I don't consider myself a writer, a professional writer. I've never been a trained, you know, writer or taken mm -hmm. any classes or anything. My experience in writing was doing documentation of patient care when I was a respiratory therapist and then a physical therapist. So, you know, it's just one of right. those things though, when you've got the idea and things just start kind of pouring out of you. So my main question is with all of these wonderful stories that you have of women and their journeys, do you, is yours in there? Is your story in there? Yeah, my story will be in there. But now it's interesting. I've, I haven't written my story to be in there. I've written tidbits of it. But okay. definitely my story will be in there because I think the reason why women share. So when I say vulnerably for this book, like I've even asked some, I've said, do you want to put this in the book? Because this is really kind of risque. And they're like, no, I want it in the book mm -hmm. to help someone else. So because I do share so openly, I think that's why it allows me to get these women to share as well. So yes, my story will be in the book as well. Okay. I just wanted to make sure of that. Yeah, thank you. I love that. I love that you're asking about it because that, that just encourages me. So yeah. Well, if yeah. you ever need any encouragement, you know how to find me. Yes, <laughs> I do. I do. Because, because I think it's just a wonderful thing to be able to share our stories. And, you know, we all have our story and mm -hmm. every single story has a backstory. But every yeah. person has more than one story. Yes. And so it's there's so much richness in there. And once you start uncovering the story and the different directions and the backstories, it is so fascinating. I think our sharing of our stories is never for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we can go back and read it, but our sharing of our stories is for that that little girl who sees you and says, Oh, wait a minute. I can do that. It's for that woman who has been abused so much in her life and who says, finally, you know what, I'm going to speak up or for that man who doesn't even realize he has the most incredible woman and he sees something. He's like, oh my gosh, look at what I have here, this partner of mine. So our story is for someone else. So if we, if we're always in the place of how do we serve someone else, I promise you, your story is the greatest story ever. Yeah. So how do you stay so positive? 
I really, it, it's such a weird thing because I know some people might think, is this really real? But I think what it is, is I'm so grateful every morning that I get up and then I truly make a choice. And it doesn't mean, you know what? It doesn't mean that like, this election is not like making me want to pull my hair out. Right. But then I thought about it. And it's so funny. You said resilience because this morning, that's what I said to my friend. I come from a long line of powerful, resilient women. That's how I stay positive because I've been given this gift. I could be living in a third world country like scrambling for food, but here I am in my beautiful home. I can go out and get whatever I want to eat. So there's, well, we can always look at things from the part of what we don't have. Mm -hmm. And it's always, it's always, always is like, what, how do you pivot? How do you look at it? And how do you go if I turn this way? So I always look at this way. If I'm looking at something, I can look at it from this point or this point. I just choose that if I'm looking at it from one point, I shake it, I, I let myself feel it. And then I go, oh, there's an, oh, there's another picture here. And, and, I, and I'm constantly working to do that. So it's not something that's like being and you're happy go lucky. It's that I, I truly work to be in this place of joy. So that's a matter of perspective. I have a little story to share with you because I, I, I have four sisters. I was raised with four sisters. We all, you know, we're so much alike, but yet we're so different at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it was several years ago and there was like a family gathering that I wasn't at. And, you know, I talked to my mother on the phone and she told me some of the things that happened. And I'm like, oh, well, that's interesting. That's interesting. And then the next day I talked to one of my sisters and they told me the same story, but it was a completely different story. And I thought, oh my gosh, well, that's really interesting because all the facts were the same, but her take on <laughs> it was completely different. And then I heard from another sister. And then mm -hmm. another sister. And it was so funny because everybody basically told the same story factually but everybody's perspective was so much different. And I said, it was almost like standing in a room. So if you stand in the same room and you stand in a corner and you're looking at the room and it looks a certain way. So then mm -hmm. you move and you stand in another corner and it's a whole different room and you see right. so much more. So it really changes your, your like awareness, your acuity and the idea that if you're having a problem, go stand someplace else. Right. And also I would say like this, let's pretend that we all have glasses on, right? Mm -hmm. But you you carry a case and in the case is glasses of joy and sadness and hurt and pain. What glasses are you wearing? Because if you keep on wearing the sad ones or the ones when you lost a job or the ones when you felt like you got beat up, then everything that you see is going to be from that perspective. So open up your case, find a new set of glasses and go put them on and say, oh, well, wait a minute. Like, have you ever seen it when the person who's colorblind puts on a certain pair of glasses and they see color for the first time? Yeah. And there's such a joy because they're like, oh my gosh, I've never seen this. That's what it is. I just take the time to select the glasses. So sometimes I know I might be wearing some that doesn't work for me. So I just switch it around. But I, this is work. It's work to be in this space of saying, even in the craziest of times, you can still find the joy in life, mm -hmm. you know? And so I just choose to do that. So you choose joy. I choose joy. I choose um, humbleness. I choose gratitude. I make a conscious choice to choose to smile. I choose to cry. And then I choose to get back up when I'm down. I choose it. I make a choice. And that's what to me is life is about is making the choice. You know, you could choose where you're at and, and it doesn't mean it's easy. But it means just as much as it takes, it takes just as much work to be in the sadness as it takes to be in the joy, mm -hmm. you know? But if you've sat in the sadness, and I say it this way, if going down that rabbit hole, if you built your sadness house in that rabbit hole and you've moved everything in and you live there, you've already created that. But it doesn't mean you can't climb out because you can look and there's some, pairs, there's some stairs and you're like, oh, wait a minute, I can walk out of this? But you have to choose to walk out. You have to choose to say, I need help. You have to choose to say, I want to choose joy. And there's no shame in asking for help. I'm the first one. I'm the first one. It's like, I need help. And I've learned that to say, I need help. And you we know? all need help sometimes. We need help. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like every time I'm like, I need some help. And sometimes it's asking me, 
it's, you know, it's saying to myself, like, I need help within it to see, to see, you know, if I'm sad, if something's going on, I need my own help, but then reaching out to others and surround yourself, know who's at your table, know who you've invited to your table, you know, and if they're not meant to be there, just like in a restaurant, if you were in a restaurant for four hours, sooner or later, they're going to ask you to leave. Mm -hmm. Okay. So sometimes you have to ask someone, oh, thank you so much, but you got to go, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Be selective. That's a really important point. Be careful who you spend time with. It is because that energy. And so even if you do, if someone, one of my greatest friends, her depression takes over her, her woe is in the world. So if she's in the ditch, I can be there to kind of lend her things, help her, but I don't have to climb in the ditch there. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn, I don't have to climb into the ditch. Right. You know, I actually had a friend, um, my very best friend of all times, best friend of 30 years that I had to break up with. Yeah. And boy, that Mm -hmm. was pretty uncomfortable. But how do you tell somebody that you've been best friends with for 30 years that you haven't liked them for the past 15 and you had been trying to figure out how to break up with them for the past 10? But Mm -hmm. it was that the amount of negativity and darkness and oh, it it was just insufferable. I just couldn't take it anymore. And it was really impacting my mental, physical, and emotional Mm -hmm. well-being. And when finally it was done, I felt like somebody removed a 50 pound weight from the top of my head. Absolutely. All of a sudden I had so many friends and so many wonderful, positive, uplifting people just came into my life. And I realized how much that relationship was really holding me back. So that's a really good point. Thanks for bringing it up. No, my pleasure. And I think a lot of times we just, we're not willing, and especially as women, we're not willing to, to let someone go. And it, I used to do that. I used to keep all people around. And then I realized that it doesn't work for me. And uh, my therapist said it perfectly on Monday. She says, I think you need to be sure of, be clear when you're, what your no's are and what your yeses are. Mm. And that's what I'm working on right now is that what are my no's and what are my yes? You know, because I'm the first, I'll want to help you, right? I do. But if you don't want to help you, then me helping you is not going to do, you know, please. If you're trying to take off your oxygen mask, I'm trying to put it on. You're taking it off. You're trying to put it on. It's like, oh my God. It's like, no, no. What do they do? Put yours on first and then you help someone else. So I'm like, okay, boo, that's yours. You want to breathe, breathe. If you want to stay in that, oh my gosh, stay in that. But but know that you don't have to get pulled down with them. And And that's a a tough one. That's a fantastic analogy though. I think that's great. Yeah. (laughs) So don't let them pull you down. Don't go in the ditch. (laughs) Don't go in the ditch. So Barbara, is there anything else that you would like to share with our audience? I mean, you're just fantastic. I could talk to you all day. (laughs) Thank you. Now, you know, my biggest thing, and I always say that is be kind to others. You know, you never know what someone's going through. And and I think the last few months have been a lot of judgment and, Mm -hmm. you know, of how this person is. And I've stepped away from people, but I would tell you this is that, one of the things that I'm starting to see now is people are kind of going, you're on this side worried. I'm on this side worried. We're both kind of doing the same things. So my biggest thing is be kind, like smile at the person. Even if you have a mask on, your mm-hmm. eyes light up, right? Mm-hmm. So smile at them, acknowledge them, throw an extra $5 on the tip when someone is delivering your food or doing something like that take the time to pay for someone in the drive-through. You never know what that could mean. When I was in Texas and I went to my favorite restaurant and I was in the drive-through and I said to my sister, I call her Sissy and I said, Sissy, I know you're here. And when I got up to the window, the lady says, the woman in front of you paid for you already. Oh. And I was, and so my sister left me all these little things and, and I was planning on paying for the woman behind me. So it, it was already there. So Sometimes you don't know that that five or $10 can make a huge difference. It's easy to look down on someone, right? But my goodness, if you can look up, then think about where you're looking. You're looking up so you support them, support yourself. So just be kind to one another. That's a great place to wrap up. I just love that. Um, It just, you gave me chills when you're, you know, Sissy, I know you're here and it's like, wow. Yeah. And the thing is when you do, show somebody that kindness, it lifts you up as well as the other person. 
Yeah. And we all are in this together. I mean, we, you know, one that's, you know, to think about it is we're all on the same planet. You know, we can't cut it in half. We can't say, well, you guys go over here and we're going to go over here. You know, if the planet, if a, you know, asteroid comes and hits a planet, guess what, boo? We're all in this together. Okay. So be kind to one another and be kind to yourself. That is really important. And that's yeah. the one that we miss a lot of times. Yes. Yeah. And now, Barbara, so how can my listeners find your podcast or, okay, your, your oh, Facebook page? That's fine. <laughs> so Barbara Hoard, H-O-A-R-D, you can find me. And what's great is you want to be friends with me. Awesome. I love friends. And if you just want to go and be nosy and want to look around, go for it. Take a look. You'll see my shows there. And then if you want to get in touch with me because you're like, I have a great story to share, then you can do send an email to Barbara at I am this woman.com. So it's W O M A N, right? Dot com. So I am this woman.com. You can always email me. And if you're wondering spelling, my name is Barbara A. So B A R B A R A. So excellent. Barbara, thank you so much for being on the show. You have made my day. You have made my week. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that so much. I really do. And I'm probably going to keep listening to this episode over and over and over again because I've had so much fun and you're, I'm just, I feel so good. I feel like I can go out and conquer the world this afternoon. Yay! <laughs> I'm going to take my brilliance with me. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for being here, Barbara. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate it too, Cheryl. Thank you for having me on the show. I, I love it. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening. I really appreciate you tuning in and remember just to be kind, be kind to each other, be kind to yourself, because that is the way of the femininja. And that's a wrap on another episode of the Femininja Project. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, be safe, be strong. And until next time, bye now.